Welcome to another stock market recap. Today is July 29, 2017. In this video, we're going to take a look at the market, uh, see what it has done, and uh, then we'll look at the uh, individual uh, major market indexes and see how they are uh, standing and where they uh, might be uh, headed. So let's take a look at the uh, indexes here. Uh, as you can see on this chart here, we have all the uh, major market indexes uh, plotted. And you notice that here, the uh, Dow Jones uh, Industrial uh, on Friday it closed with another new all-time closing high. But the uh, astonishing thing is if you look at all the other indexes, none of them uh, follow suit on Friday. So that's a, a little bit of a cautionary flag for us to uh, keep in mind as we uh, proceed forward. Uh, watching all these uh, indexes and the most troublesome one is the transportation if you look at this chart here on the transportation remember last week we were saying that the uh, drop on this pullback came too quickly and uh, too steep that caused a little bit of a concern then in the middle of the I mean the uh, uh, earlier uh, uh, this week it actually got a nice bounce until Thursday then it actually really uh, sold off and uh, it didn't even hold this uh, support zone here uh, that we have highlighted but on Friday it did close back into the support zone but the other thing is also is the diversion between the Dow Jones 30 and the transportation notice this steep drop that occurred on the transportation on Thursday while the uh, Dow Jones uh, 30 actually closed at a, another all-time closing high prior to the uh, Friday uh, another new uh, closing high. And if we look at the uh, S&P 500, uh, looking at the VIX, you see the VIX uh, popped up on uh, Thursday and the S&P came down and it came down fast and it bounced uh, back up uh, quickly as well. So this fix here also tells us that the uh, near term uh, selling might be over for now. But the other thing that we want to uh, keep in mind is to look at this particular uh, section here for similarity uh, of uh, behavior. If you look at this right here, the fix, uh, it could be uh, doing something of this uh, nature. And if we uh, look at uh, you know this right here, we can also see a little bit of a choppiness. So in the coming day, we could see uh, a little bit of a choppiness here on the uh, S&P before it uh, makes its decision of which way to go, either break down or break out into a new high. But the other thing is to pay attention is the uh, uh, the AD line. You know, the New York Stock Exchange advanced decline is still trending upward so uh, that has not deteriorated yet and uh, until we see uh, other uh, market uh, internal uh, showing some sort of deterioration uh, we are not about to uh, call a major turning point but the uh, diversion that we are seeing on the uh, indexes is a uh, little bit concerning and uh, it is a uh, cautionary uh, sign there so we have to pay attention let's take a look at the s p cash index remember last week we were talking about a couple scenarios here one is that it will come up to the zone pull back a little bit and then move to the uh, 2500 or the on the downside is pull back be a dip below the 2450 this pivot here or essentially uh, and and come back and retest it and find resistance and work itself down filling this gap along the way to the uh, trend line and possibly get down to this uh, 24 359 what we saw here was essentially well there was another uh, upside scenario which was a little bit of a pullback come in and fill this gap and then get bounced up and pull to the zone and hit to the uh, 2500 as you can see from the price action, it seems like it's a combination of these two here on this earlier move. If you notice that it came up, then on Thursday it sold off, came down, filled this gap, and right now it's working itself up. So what we're going to look at is possibly in the coming week is the continuation on the upside. If that is the case, then we're basically looking for this thing to come back, get above this 2485, you know, this zone here between this 78.6 extension and also this 127 
uh, uh, Fibonacci extension is to come through the zone and then come back and test it for a little bit of support before it breaks through the 2500. The ultimate is probably come up to this uh, trend line up here in the upper channel. But on the downside is essentially we could see it come back down, essentially play this uh, 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 trace out uh, again, essentially, uh, you know, following that, uh, that mapping of the uh, uh, price action is come down, break this uh, pivot high, and come back and retest the found resistance and come work yourself down to this trend line and fill this gap here. And then come down and work to this uh, pivot low here at this uh, 24,359. Okay. Now there's another scenario is that it could come down and test this 24,53,46 and then just push through on a bounce and uh, make its way up to that 2,500. Believe the 2500 is still in play. Uh, it's going to come back and target at 2500 eventually. We don't know how soon or how uh, how much later it will uh, uh, before we see this 2500 get breached. And then if we uh, take a look at the uh, the spy, the ETF uh, on the spy here. So if we uh, use the same uh, 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 scenario or the price action footprint as we just uh, went to for the uh, uh, cash index is uh, one possibility has come up to this 247.48 and come back test it a little bit and then push through to the uh, uh, to, uh, you know to, uh, 250 area and eventually get above that and get up to possibly 251 this 1618 and pretty much in uh, confluence with this uh, uh, trend line here on these upper channel or the uh, other way is that they come down, found support on 245, and then come up, push through the uh, 247.50, come back and test it, and then move into the uh, 250. The downside scenario is that break the 245, come down on this pivot, somewhere around this 244 here, found support, and then come back and bounce, and encounter resistance at 245, and unable to break back above it, then work yourself down to do uh, somewhere around 242 and fill this gap and then test on this uh, trend line or essentially these pivot here at the uh, 242. Then uh, maybe get a little chop and then work yourself down to the 240 area. This level here, this pivot low. Okay, that's the uh, SPY. And if we uh, take a look at the, uh, the ES, on the ES, essentially, we are looking at the similar price action and move up to the uh, uh, 24.80.75, come back, test for a little bit of a support and push it to the 2500 and into the 25.02 and a quarter. Or it could come down, test this pivot, uh, pivot high at the uh, 25.51.50 and then push up to this uh, 80.75 pullback and then into the uh, uh, 2500 area. Or the uh, scenario on the downside is that break uh, below the uh, 51.5, come back, test it, fill the gap somewhere around this uh, 24, 28, and get a little bounce off of it after we uh, fill that gap uh, due to this trend line here and then work yourself down to 24.275. So that's the ES. Now let's take a look at the uh, NASDAQ 100. We see the NASDAQ 100 against the uh, scenario, one of the scenarios that was uh, watching is calling for it to come up to the 6,000 area, uh, break through the 6,000 and pull back a little bit and work toward this upper trend line. Uh, it was kind of proceeding to that uh, direction for a bit, until Thursday, then it, uh, we got that big liquidation on the tech stock and it brought it back down to uh, this uh, pivot high here, this uh, 58.45.15. Then we got a bounce on Friday. So right now, we're essentially watching the possible scenario of getting back above this uh, 58.97.69 and come up to the 6,000, break the 6,000, maybe pull back a little bit for a little bit of Tesla support and then push it through into the uh, 6100, uh, try to uh, tag this uh, upper trend line uh, on the uh, price channel. Then on the downside is it continue to come down and break the 58.45 level, this pivot high, uh, and then come down, uh, come back and retest. Essentially, we're gonna follow this particular uh, footprint and come down, fill the gap here, uh, fill the gap, 
and get a little balance and then work to back down to this pivot low at the uh, 55 uh, uh, the, uh, the 55.79.64 or this uh, pivot low here 55.68.47 on that uh, you know th that uh, region okay so, so that's basically the uh, scenario for the Nasdaq 100 and if we uh, take a look at the uh, the QQQ so looking at the QQQ using the same footprint as, as the scenario that we just went to for the uh, NASDAQ uh, 100 extensionally we're going to come up to this 146.43 uh, break to it, get a little bit of a uh, uh, resistance. So essentially when, when I map out this scenario when I have these little uh, pullback it could be just a little bit of a chop you know it could be a, a consolidation a, a small consolidation before it pushes through so in this case we say it's going to come up to that 146.43 pull back a little bit and it push through to the uh, 149.32 and then on the downside it's essentially going to come back and break below this 142.29 and then come back and retest it found resistance and then come down and uh, fill this uh, this gap here and then get a little balance and work it all down to this trend line and maybe we get a little balance and possibly uh, you know work itself back down to these pivot low here uh, near the uh, 135.87 okay so that's the Q and if we take a look at the uh, E-mini uh, NASDAQ 100 the, e -Q, the NQ uh, again was looking at the uh, uh, same uh, price action is to break to 6,000 and work up to the uh, 6,100 or this one here break the uh, 58.52 come back and check it and fill this gap and then work itself down to the 55.72 and a half along the way filling this gap okay that's the NQ and if we take a look at the uh, Russell 2000 okay, the uh, Russell 2000 cash index and we're looking forward to uh, break the channel break above this low channel and move itself toward the uh, uh, 1470 area uh, didn't quite do that uh, instead it, it broke the channel a little bit and then it pulled back pulled back in and essentially testing this uh, pivot here all these pivot high right? there's a, a little bit of a uh, trading band here and right now it seems like it could pull back or essentially playing out this this section of the uh, the move the scenario that we map out previous week All right so we could uh, look at the downside could be uh, coming down uh, get a little bounce on the 1426 uh, 68 and then proceed down test the low boundary of the uh, of this training band you know near the uh, 1396 87 and then come back down uh, unable to uh, get back above that uh, trading band and work to the uh, the lower trend line here on this particular uh, price channel that we've been uh, monitoring okay. the ultimate uh, upside if it uh, get back up then it's basically this big channel here above the uh, 1500 and if we look at the IWM on the uh, ETF okay, so again we're essentially looking at the possibility of the upside is to continue to come up uh, break this uh, trend line this channel come back for a retest move about this uh, 145.70 and maybe get a little bit of a check or it could uh, come up to that 147.20 here and do a little bit of uh, consolidation between these two uh, level before it pushes up to that 150 uh, above that 150 toward the uh, the uh, upper channel uh, trend line there on the end, on the uh, downside we continue to look for this particular uh, footprint to play out essentially coming down and possibly come down to fill this little gap here uh, and uh, continue to go down and test this these lower boundary here and get a little check and work itself down to the uh, lower trend line on this particular uh, price channel here at the uh, 134.64 okay so those are the indexes and the uh, ETF now we're going to take a look at some of the stock. Let's uh, start off with Apple here. Uh, once again, just a reminder, Apple is due to report earning uh, next Tuesday, I believe, on the 1st. And so be careful uh, about trading to uh, earning. Uh, let's take a look at uh, what the uh, scenario was that we're watching. One of the upside scenario was we're watching it to uh, come up 
get above this pivot and then pull back get a little bit of a test for support and then move up to all these uh, high and uh, make a new high that did not happen last week but it did come up and it did pull back but it pulled back much sharper than we uh, anticipated it actually came down and we test uh, these uh, level here, the support level 147.50. Uh, notice the uh, the downside here. So it went up, pulled back, and now we got a little bit of an in in our seven candle on Friday. That is uh, uh, inside inside bar here. So what we're going to be watching next week on the earning is uh, if it get a pop, then uh, we'll probably see it come up and take out the uh, the all time high and probably uh, come up to this uh, 159.73 uh, but if it's uh, disappointed then it most likely uh, could come down uh, take out the 147 and possibly uh, come and retest this 142 here this 142 and then uh, come back down uh, into this uh, 618 uh, retracement zone and I will be uh, putting out a uh, market projected uh, uh, price move on uh, Apple uh, later on and here's Facebook Facebook's earning came out and the market was projected uh, 172.27 and it uh, closed at 172.45 on Friday it did get as high as 175 uh, and change uh, here on this uh, you know 175.49 before I pull back so right now I'm essentially looking for the possibility of a continuation uh, pulling back maybe uh, filling this little gap here get down to this 164.91 or come back essentially test this trend line might even dip below it to this uh, this retracement zone here this uh, 618 and 50 percent before we get a bounce back up and possibly come up put in new all-time high and then uh, get up and maybe tag this 183 that's the upside and then on the downside is essentially it's going to come down into the channel I mean this trend line could not get back and come back down to this uh, trend line here and test this level here and possibly get down to this 147.80 or possibly the 144.42 so these are the downside targets and here's Alibaba. Alibaba uh, put in an inside bar here on Friday so we're basically looking for it to uh, break above or break below break above then get above this 160 which is the 168 but we also have a 200% uh, up here is that 182.80 again Alibaba is due to report earning on the 10th uh, before the market opens so we actually got a couple of weeks before uh, Alibaba report is earning so uh, if it uh, break above them basically you're looking for that possibility of moving up to uh, this level here work yourself up to this uh, 182 183 uh, dollar level if it uh, break below on this uh, you know, inside inside bar then we're looking for first is uh, testing this 146 here uh, this support level here if it can't hold this 146 then we're essentially looking for this thing to come back down to test this pivot and if get down here uh, and come down and fill this gap that would not be good for Alibaba and here's Tesla Tesla actually remember we we're talking about that it's a possibility to come up and fill this gap and looking here right now is essentially setting up a bear flag and if it break below then we essentially got a bear flag uh, working and it could bring this thing back down to uh, this zone here under this 290 area and if it uh, continue to move up and fill this gap it still could be uh, setting up that bear flag right? because uh, there's some distance here so uh, the upside scenario the positive upside scenario is that come up and fill this gap come back and check this 350 level then move up and make a uh, you know test of the old high and possibly make a new high where it's at uh, 127 uh, what is that 127 let me put up the 127 then we get some idea what that level might be 127 443 that's a heck of a move so uh, we'll keep an eye on it anything is possible but I'm basically looking for this bear flag to uh, to play out uh, again earning reporting on Wednesday the second so pay attention to that 
And here's Google. Google reported earning, got a little bit disappointed. Uh, it came down and uh, back to this pivot low here. It checked this pivot low before it got a bounce on Friday with an inside bar here. So if it uh, break above, then we'll probably be uh, looking at maybe it's uh, working back up to this level here and possibly trying to get back at the uh, 1008. But if it break below, then we're essentially looking at this thing to come back down and check the 920 area and possibly even uh, lower and uh, work, uh, fill this gap here. Then it'd be uh, somewhere down at the 893. So uh, the downside is uh, you know down here at this 893, and the upside is possibly uh, get up here, check, and move up to this uh, 1008. Okay, because this scenario that we were looking at on the earning for the earning was come up new high, come back down, push to 2.1037. Uh, that's the projected move on the upside of the market. And uh, on the downside, essentially come down, dip below this trend line, come up and okay, kind of resist and then work itself down into the uh, lower level of 950. That's what the market was projecting. So as you can see that uh, the market did tag those level that uh, lower level that 950 on Amazon I put out a revised for market projected uh, move uh, right before the earning come out uh, basically it was 1086.35 on the upside and 996.15 and you can see it got pretty close to that on the intraday tagging that high and uh, you see that it ran up right it ran up to uh, that number before uh, the close uh, for the earning come out and the gap down. So on Friday it uh, kind of uh, came back up a little bit, but uh, from its low, but it still uh, you know was uh, near the uh, the low end of the uh, projected move. And right now you know it's basically held above this uh, thousand and one. It came down to this uh, thousand dollar mark uh, close to it, and it got a nice bounce and bounced back up and close uh, somewhere around this uh, you know thousand twenty. Okay, so uh, we could uh, continue to see some upside if there's a follow to fill out this gap here. And then we'll see would it be able to get uh, above this uh, trend line and, and then back test it and then make another run at the uh, all time high of 1072, 60s, 1072.67. No, I mean uh, somewhere around here, 1085, I believe somewhere up there. Okay, and then on the uh, downside is that it come down, uh, test this trend line, enable the hole, come back and back test it and move itself down and test this uh, pivot low of 927 and possibly come down and fill this gap and then we'll see where it go from there. Then on NVIDIA, NVIDIA came up and uh, put in a new uh, all time high uh, then uh, just kind of uh, pulling back a little bit, getting uh, back underneath this uh, 160, 174, then bounce back. So right now we're essentially looking at a continuation of downside. It could be come down here and then get a little bounce and uh, from the earning and it pushes up to this 184, 180, uh, you know 184 uh, uh, or 185 area or this uh, 127 extension of 188. Okay, so that's uh, one possibility on the uh, on the upside. Then on the downside is that it could continue to come down and uh, test this 138, uh, unable to uh, find support, and then uh, come down to these uh, uh, you know this uh, this gap area, essentially uh, this trend line, break this trend line, and possibly come down and fill this gap. Okay, and that could be the earning move. So uh, so keep an eye on that. Here's Netflix. It's still holding up above the uh, the earning move, and uh, right now the scenario is if it continues to move up, then uh, we're basically uh, looking at the uh, possibility of uh, getting above the uh, uh, the 200 mark and possibly uh, making its way up to this 200% uh, move here to the 221.46. So uh, that's what we're basically are looking at. Maybe come back and back test here, and then move up. Uh, six stack its way up to uh, this uh, 221. But if uh, this is the uh, the the swing of this uh, this uh, post earning move, uh, then uh, and if we're gonna pull back, and if pull back within this zone here, somewhere around maybe try to fill this gap. Whether it could possibly come down and fill this gap 
or maybe you just uh, you know come down to this uh, 618 this 173.45 area and then push this up and break about 191.50 and check it then it could come up and uh, break above the 200 and into the uh, 204.35 so that's a uh, possible uh, upside move or it could uh, essentially come down uh, break below this trend line here come back within this channel and come down to the retracement zone back test this I found resistance then it's come down and fill this gap you know this gap here and continue to move down and uh, check this uh, you know this pivot low here 144.75 so now let's take a look at some potential trade location for the coming week I want to focus on the precious metal market here uh, right now we are looking at the gold future as you can see it got a trend line here this is a multi-year trend line and this is a weekly chart of the gold future and you can see that it's about to uh, test this trend line and possibly maybe make a break above this trend line if that is going to happen then it's going to be pretty bullish for gold so if you're going to break this trend line the first level that I'd be watching will be 1300 and if we could get above that 1300 then be uh, looking at the potential of making it uh, a run up above the uh, this uh, this level here on this gap field of 1338 and eventually get up to a much higher level here into the uh, 1377 but even on the short term play if it make a run on the 1300 there are some potential trade location that might be worthwhile watching and uh, if you are not trading the future let's go and take a look at some of the ETF and, uh, and, and these are the gold miner ETF so let's take a look at the uh, the first one is a 2x junior gold miner these are leverage uh, ETF so don't hold it a long term these are meant to be short term trading only alright so we're just gonna be uh, looking on a very short term quick move and here is the uh, the 3x junior gold miner and here are the uh, trade location that we are be focusing on anywhere within this area would be a good location to enter a short-term swing long possibly and uh, in and some of the uh, uh, levels down here anytime if it go below these levels here then that would be a uh, nice place to uh, exit the trade with a loss especially a stop level so these are the potential uh, trade location that might uh, turn out to be uh, uh, pretty interesting and what we're looking at is essentially the first target is this gap fill here up at this pivot high so it's essentially give us a little bit over of 2R and with some of the uh, sample uh, uh, level that I, uh, I set up and this right here is uh, the risk is basically $1.33 and, and 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 so basically this one make two uh targeting this level and possibly if it get up to uh uh this level up here then we be uh, you know more than six all you know at this uh, uh 30 uh, 20 and above level okay so uh that is the junior gold miner 3x leverage etf again do not play this for a long term hold all right and then here's the uh, 3x leverage gold miner not the junior but the gold miner okay so again we essentially are looking at these trade location here anywhere above these within these level would be a good trade location to take a look at possible swing long and we are basically looking at the initial target up at this area again you know this little gap fill here so somewhere around 3848 with a 2R return alright so that's a 2R and R and then if we want to be a little bit conservative so we're going to go and just look at the 1X junior gold miner and again here's the uh, the trade location potential trade location here for a quick swing long right here somewhere around this 3379 area and the uh, stop will be uh, below this 3277 and here uh, the first uh, 
uh, resistant level is somewhere around this 3490 area. So that's just a little bit about one R, right? And here is the, you know, the uh, the two R, the three R. So right here is basically on this pivot, is essentially somewhere around four R, okay? So again, make sure you have a viable risk management plan to trade these guys or trade anything. If you don't, then doesn't matter how good the setup is, you won't make money consistently. Okay, so let's take a look at the GDX, that is the 1X gold miner. So here's the GDX, the 1X gold miner. So uh, here's the trade location that we're looking at for potential swing long, and here are the uh, potential you know, stop lo uh, level. And basically, you know, you got targeting this right here as the initial target with this pivot as the uh, the primary target so essentially uh, it's a little bit over 2ER okay and if we uh, get up here then it's only uh, maybe a one and a half R so again I could not re-emphasize how important it is to have a risk management plan to trade these things all right otherwise you're just scraping penny or, or getting whack uh, when you get stop out all right so if you want to trade individual mining stock gold mining stock here's a couple of them uh, first one is anglo gold uh, again these are uh, here's anglo gold and beware there's uh, earning coming up in a few weeks on august the 21st all right so here's the uh, trade location uh, look first look at the pattern this looks like a uh, double bottom a w pattern and it's about to break out so that's what we're going to be looking at is the trade location near the breakout point all right and with the stop just underneath uh, this location here and we're playing for this little gap fill here initially and that would give you a 2R return and if you could get up to this location up here this pivot high then that would be close to 6R okay so that's uh, angle go and the next one is bear it go again i i don't really fond of this particular one but i just toss it out there's potential here okay and i just let you uh, uh sort of keep an eye on and let you digest it a little bit uh because i i'm not too fond of this one because of this candle here all right, because I, you know, there could be a lot of trap long up here. So when price get up to here, we might get a supply of uh, sellers that want to get out and uh, sell this thing down. And sometimes the selling could uh, bring in short seller, and what that gonna end up is creating a, uh, you know, more downside pressure. And it could come down and hit or stop and get stopped out before it reverses. Okay, that's one possibility because our trade location is up here somewhere. Right, so if it could get above this peak here, and there's enough buyers to m push it up and hold it up, then that would be a little bit better uh, potential. Because that means the uh, there's enough buyer to overwhelm those seller, and then we will be watching this particular level as the first level resistant because we want to make sure it could get above this there is a little bit of resistance here not much of a trap seller there i mean trap long there but there are seller up there all right because last time when it got up here the seller came in and sold it down so we want to make sure that this time when it come up here those seller is gone right but if they return then that could be a problem okay and if they they are gone and the bull is able to take this up then we'll be watching for this gap to get filled then you will be able to get you know two and a half to three R, I mean one and a half to three R here on this in, uh, or, or one one and a half to a little bit over two R here if the gap get filled then if uh, you are strong enough to trail it somehow right then you'd be uh, able to possibly get maybe uh, a little bit over 4R if it uh, come up to this pivot high. Well, again, you know, I think the, you know, the earning came out, 
so we don't have to worry about this one about the earning and that's probably because you know the earning that caused this spike here we got a lot of excited uh, long that bought it, bought it up then uh, the uh, seller came in and faded faded down so now there's some uh, a lot of these people that uh, bought up here got trapped on the way up got trapped so they're going to be uh, uh, be glad to see the uh, price come back up for them to uh, get the money back and get out so so that's the reason why I said I'm not too fond of this setup but there is potential here so I just toss it out as a uh, possibility okay good luck that's it for this week's stock market recap and thank you for watching if you like this video don't forget to uh, click on the uh, click on the thumbs up and if you're not a subscriber to this video channel click the uh, subscribe button on the uh, lower right hand corner or my avatar on the uh, upper left hand corner and good luck on your trading